Hello everyone, Zero Fossil Fuel. Today is Sunday, March 2nd, 2014, and this is uh, another update on the rocket stove. So, like I said in my last video, I didn't know if that was the last video <laughs> on the rocket stove, and it won't be because I've been spending some time tweaking. I, I wholeheartedly admit I have become somewhat obsessed with uh, fine-tuning the dimensions of the basket, and I found that you know, very small changes make very big differences. So, in this next series of photos, I just want to take you briefly through uh, the progression that has taken place with the development of the pellet grate or the fire grate or the fire pot or whatever you want to call it for the rocket stove. In fact, this was my first prototype and I may repurpose this to make a little bit of a rake because one of the things that I'm still dealing with and battling against is the buildup of ash inside the basket. Seems no matter what what dimensions I use or what shape I use, uh, I still can't get away 100% from ash buildup. So every once in a while, I need to take a little, uh, I don't know, a U-shaped poker and reach down behind the basket inside the firebox of the rocket stove and just sort of poke it, tickle it a little bit at the bottom to shake loose some of the ash that is built up. Once it gets to about 650 degrees, then it starts to clean itself and the, the, uh, the uh, rate of consumption is high enough where the ash buildup becomes much and much less of a problem until it starts to avalanche and, and really starts taking off. So in this first photo, you see uh, the version, well, I don't even know what version I call it. Uh, so let's just take a look at the photos, all right? In this photo, uh, this was the, the first one that I created with the offset loops on the bottom. And uh, when I did that, I found that it allowed too many pellets to pass through. In the next photo, you see where I've cut off the every other section and then welded a, a little bar across the top. That ended up being a very decent basket design. That's this one right here, which I still have. And I'm keeping this as a backup because it does, it does run very well. Uh, then I spent an evening pounding away at it, changing the dimensions. Uh, making it uh, an even width all the way down until you got to the bottom, making it unidirectional, uh, offsetting the the uh, the loops at the bottom, trying different things, and eventually what I ended up with was this design. This particular design, and I've taken as many photos of this as I can to give you a really good idea of of how this is how this is made. Um, it is unidirectional and you'll notice that uh, the offset is about the same all the way underneath the basket. This fire basket by far is the best design I've come with come up with so far. Uh, I may try to simplify the creation of this basket design for you and modify it a little bit try a different assembly technique, maybe even use my sheet metal brake to bend a whole bunch of the stainless steel rods together as one and then finish the, the rounding with uh, a, a socket. I don't know yet, but um, the development is not 100% complete. I'll always be tweaking with it a little bit, but with this design, I did reach one evening a maximum temperature of 897 degrees Fahrenheit at which point I sent out a tweet and those of you who follow my Twitter feed or who go who uh, will browse to the web to my Twitter page in fact I will post links down below for uh, everything that I'm describing uh, you, you will see that I sent out a tweet that says okay I think I've proven my point shutting it down now and I've been asked Z why didn't you go for 900 degrees 
Very simple. Two reasons. First reason, it was freaking hot in the workshop. Second reason, I didn't want to melt the stainless steel. So, yeah, I can do it. And uh, the fire basket works extremely well, and I'm really happy with it. Last, I want to cover a couple of recent developments in the alternative energy world. Um, we're very sad, some of us are very sad, that the Smart Scarecrow show this past Thursday aired for the very last time. Gary Hendershot, a.k.a. Smart Scarecrow, has uh, gotten some, some lucrative jobs that he simply couldn't turn down and something had to give. And unfortunately, after five years of doing the Smart Scarecrow show for zero benefit or zero money, investing lots of money into doing it, putting out a really fine production, giving Sterling Allen a free ride for a very long time, well, that, that's come to an end, unfortunately. So we have mixed blessings, but Scarecrow, we're going to miss you. And uh, I have uh, promised my audience that I will do my best to pick up the slack when and where I can. Next, I want to announce that I have started a forum at altenergy.org. Again, there will be links down below in the description to the forum address. It is a simple machines forum. and. Uh, it is under development, it's brand new. I invite you to come to altenergy.org and join. I will be taking suggestions for topics and threads. So if you, if you have something that you'd like to discuss that you would like me to address, I'd be happy to do it for you there. Lastly uh, is a bit of an appeal to my fan base. I have become uh, increasingly involved with and interested in the cryptocurrency field and uh, learning as much as I can about things like Bitcoin and Quark coin and all the other variations of the cryptocurrencies that are out there. Uh, there are a couple of very viable ones. Of course, Bitcoin was the first. It was also the uh, most recent to be in the news for the Mt. Gox debacle and uh, it, it exposed the vulnerability to users if they entrust any of their assets to unknown third parties, even if they appear to be uh, reputable. And it underscores the need to maintain control of your own possessions. Uh, meaning maintain control of your own inventory of cryptocurrency. So if you're going to have a Bitcoin wallet, you may want to think twice about storing that Bitcoin wallet with a third-party online service. It's safer to store that Bitcoin wallet or your Quark coin wallet or whatever wallet you've got on your own computer and encrypt it securely and make backups regularly. Uh, I have become interested in a cryptocurrency which marries the best of the monetary structure of the Bitcoin with the unbelievable security that's built into the Quark coin. And appropriately, this new cryptocurrency is called Bitquark. Um, many of you who have not been involved with cryptocurrencies, you, you want to start taking a look at the, these sorts of things because eventually paper money, it's going away. Okay, it will go away. And currency will become web-based or internet-based or transmitted electronically and the best that will survive. And I think Bitquark is going to be one of the best. Now, for the appeal. I have often asked my audience, please donate. But if you can't donate, what I'm asking now is, would you please mine some cryptocurrency for me? Would you please mine some Bitquark for me? And in order to do that, I have created a nice, neat little package that you can download from altenergy.org again. There will be a link in the description. And in this package, you will be able to uh, install on your computer. Now, I know you have a computer because you're watching this right now. Okay, so if you have a computer, you can help me. And to do so, again, 
download the file that I will make available at altenergy.org, run it on your computer, let it run in the background. There are complete instructions in the file and it will run what's called a mining program. The mining program is simply a mathematical calculation program that runs in the, in the background, much like the SETI at home project did long ago. And instead it's generating crypto coins. And what it will do for me is it will deposit the crypto coins that you mine into my wallet. So if you've got any spare CPU processing power, and I know you do, then I will ask that you simply download the program, run it in the background, go about your daily business, and if you can, even let your computer stay on for me and go 24-7. It would really help me a lot, okay? If you can't afford to donate money, please donate a little bit of your computer, computer processing horsepower and it will really make a difference, okay? Thank you. Now, as I point out in the README file of the, uh, of the file that I've uh, linked to down below, your antivirus program will probably complain about, this, about these mining programs. The reason is that virus and Trojan and malware developers who have spread their malware and Trojans across the internet very often in the past have included these mining programs as a payload in the Trojans that were delivered to the users unsuspectingly without their consent and mining on behalf of the Trojan authors to send the cryptocurrency back to them. Now in this case I'm telling you that you're mining for me and you will be sending your cryptocurrency to me that you mine. All right. The program itself is benign. And if you must, when you run the program, if you have antivirus software and it pops up a window saying, we don't think this is very good software, add it to your exception list and it will, it will run just fine. It will not leave anything behind on your computer permanently. If you decide to take it off, it will stay off. So again, the last appeal, please mine some Bitquark for me. Help me, uh, help me uh, further the, the development of the lab and continue the projects that I, that I hope to be able to bring to you in the future. That's all for now, Zero Fossil Fuel. Thanks for watching. Please rate, share, comment, and subscribe. And as always, peace. All right, so here's the cotton ball. It's been ignited with the regular standard scripto lighter. And it is burning off and dropping some of the petroleum jelly into the pellets and igniting them very nicely in just a few minutes. I'll show you what the pile looks like and then we'll start slowly adding some more pellets and then, on, and then, and then automate it. Okay then, this is revision 2.2.1 in operation. That is exactly the drop rate I'm looking for. Just enough to allow a few embers to sit on the floor and finish their burning, and they get sucked away into the tube, into the horizontal tube is ash, and the rest of it feeds down. Into the bottom to complete the burning. That is the ticket right there. No ash buildup. Embers fall out just in time. Complete their burn, get sucked in. That is a beautiful sight right there.